Podquester time now. It is Podquester time. Oh hi. Oh hello, friend. Nice to see you. And you. Yeah, well, what a what an app. Ep- what an episode. What a day. What, what a day. A, what a day. I think it. I think it topped exp. I mean, there were a, there was a lot of hype. Let's be honest. There was a lot of hype. But I think it. I think it surpassed the hype. Well, let's be honest. The the previews, the trailer, the little uh, Muna thing with the uh, with the uh, he of all people um, thing was already a huge upgrade. From what we'd seen in seasons past, like oh, yeah. the quality level, the editing level was already like knocking our socks off. So we got that plus really good gameplay. Yeah, sounds well, I mean, fake. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, the, the the production value first off, like we'll just go there, is through the roof, right? Like production. Let's. I mean, I don't want to overstep. You know, I don't want to go crazy, but I mean, to me, the production value is better than Big Brother. I mean, right? Like it's that's not that's not a crazy thing to say. Like it's like it seems to be on another level in terms of what's going into it. And I think, you know, I think that there are a lot more thoughtful choices than yeah. Big Brother. Like obviously, there are still some disadvantages of not having <laughs> like cameras in there twenty four seven, right? Um, yeah. Angles, reactions, etc. But I think that there were choices that were made that were very much superior and it led to better quality, um, not only on the production level, but on the game level, (laughs) the choices. And it it, it also kind of tricked us because I was a little sus in the beginning that we were going to have another all-star situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I guess let's just jump into it. Like when these people were introduced, I was a little worried that their relationships were going to make it too easy to come for the lesser connected and the lesser known. Right. Um, well, but I'm, still, I'm not necessarily going to say that wasn't the case yet. I'm not going to necessarily say that wasn't the case, but I do think that the gameplay was a lot more interesting than just going for oh, the easy picky they, they, they were coming in hot. They were coming in hot, real hot. And and the quote unquote easy targets, which you you were like Josh not, Josh is never going to be an easy target. Y'all fooling yourselves. Mm-hmm. But the quote unquote easy target straight from the gate was like not today, son. No, nope. and was not going to play it that though. game. They tried it. They said they said as soon as he walked through the door, they were like that guy right there. I mean, blame LOS all you want. He was a big red X to everybody. Yeah. They were like this man. We First don't know day. him, and he is. I mean, it, it's just go to any mini. This is what happens, right? Mm-hmm. Like he stood out as a first boot, and he wasn't going to lay down and die. And he certainly, he certainly didn't. No. Josh, Josh, rise up! Everybody <laughs> saw it. Everybody saw it. I called it. I called it last episode. I'm going to keep calling it. Josh, I, entertainment. Entertainment. I think. I think that what was super interesting, though, is. So we usually see on Big Brother, at least, and I'm sorry to keep making this comparison. We'll stop in a minute. But we just came off the last season. So obviously we see people being like, I guess I got to fight for the power. I got to fight for the um, power of veto. I've got to fight for the head of household. These people didn't stop at losing a competition or losing a vote. They kept fighting. Everyone kept fighting. Um, they weren't like, mm, it's over, can't convince anyone. They were like, no, 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 no. What I'm going to do is switch this up. And they did. And part of that is the mechanics of the game. The game's a lot more fluid, a lot. Um, it's a lot harder. <laughs> to be honest, it's a lot harder than Big Brother. Um, so I think that the mechanics of the game lend themselves to this kind of um, fight in these players. And like, because it's not like, oh, you lost two competitions. I guess that's it. They kept going. They were not going to lay down, and it was beautiful. Yeah, if I was if I was going to uh, sum up the cast in one word, I'd say they're they're scrappy. It's a scrappy cast, you know. They're scrappers. They're not. They're, they're, nobody there is going to lay down and die. I think all of them are. 
there's pride. They have, they have, they have pride. I mean, regardless of prize, no prize, what have you, I think they all have pride and they all really want to show what kind of players they are, which leads to, you know, fun feeds, good TV. Yeah. Yeah, good TV. Yeah. Um, let's start chronologically. Yeah. So let's get the music though. That was my first. The, okay, I did write like my first note is where can I get the soundtrack for Sequestered oh, yeah. Season Four? I need the Spotify, the Spotify list. That's Lots it. Of, yeah. Who are these people? I don't. Does all of just have like a like a like some go to bands or are they like indie? You are asking. Don't ask me about music. We all know I'm very basic when it comes to music. Um, and so I just, I, I just know that I know that the, the credit song, I think was well from America. Yeah. But I'm not sure where she got the rest of the music, but they, I mean, like, if you don't sing, we appreciate power while you're like sending emails and shit, mm -hmm. I, you're not doing your emails, right? You are not sending them powerfully and, uh, no. it's going to be reflected no. in the tone no. of your email. Yeah. Clearly people who don't <laughs> do not appreciate power. We they do. appreciate power. Um, I thought it was scary. interesting. I liked I liked the way it started, which we got sequester bot. Good to see. Still have like flashbacks from like all stars when those the sequester bot came on. Would always my heart would drop whenever sequester bot comes on. Heart drop. Uh, What's yeah. going on? Um, but I liked I liked the beginning of it. I thought it was interesting phrasing in terms of that they used the minis to like figure out good players to be on this, which, you know, I mean, I, I think in some of the cases, obviously somebody were, some people were precast before COVID, some yeah. were after, but I thought it was, it was interesting to think about really the minis as a, a breeding ground of great players. And that if you show yourself to be something special, like you may be chosen by Sequesterbot to actually go into the, into the house, which is cool. I, I, I like I like that. I do too. And I think that, you know, the players who knew they were going in versus the players who got the call later, I think that it's really interesting to think about their strategy, their strategy. like Jacob Jones, who didn't want to play again after he won Winners at War 2. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to know if that was part of his strategy because he knew he was going on sequester. Yeah, that is good, good. Like he had done enough by that point that he could only hinder himself rather than improve his status, right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I mean, to me, I or you could see Brent's point of view where he was like, actually, I need to play yeah. so that I decrease my threat level. Yeah. You know? Um, we talked about that a little last time. I thought it was it's something that came to mind, like how Brent used the minis we said like his whole strategy was to use the mini show the kind of player he is so people know what to expect going in now we didn't get everyone's opinion of how brent plays the game but i thought it was interesting like very early on marcello was like i well i'm not going to believe a word brent says yeah i think because that goes against everything that brent has tried to push in the minis is that you can believe every word he says because he never lies and that being said it just goes to show you maybe how little people paid attention to the minis and really maybe it didn't matter because still a large majority of the cast probably doesn't remember Brent's gameplay from the minis. I agree. I think that Brent, you know, was like, Oh, I'll do this. And people will be like, yeah, he might be like this on the podcast, but he's really like, this is a player. No, every single person clocked him and was like, I want to see you play the way you talk. When I called him Mr. Twitter fingers, which was, Iconic, and of course he's changed his Twitter and handle to Mr. Twitter Fingers, and I love it. But everyone was like, "Why are you playing a scared game? You got a lot of shit to say on Twitter, so play your game." And he was like, "No, the whole point was I I don't play that game. I want to play a game where I win, not where I entertain people." And people are like, "You might like." He did not de-escalate the way he thought he did, and it would have taken a much longer and a much bigger campaign to do so he would have i mean like if you're still on big brother podcast even if you're not on sequester podcast saying people are being boring people are being boring people are being boring then they expect you to come into sequester and not be boring like yeah. you can't use the excuse it's a completely different game yeah no. i don't know what people i don't think i don't know i never expected that from brent though like to me brent played 
as I, like he seemed a bit nervous. And I understood that because I think this means a lot to him. I think this means, you know, a ton to actually get a chance to play this game. Like at the end of the day, like put everything. Yes, a lot of people know Brent Walton, right? Like a large majority of the cast, Josh said it himself. He'd listened to him for five years, right? A lot of people are fans of him. But at the end of the day, Brent is still a fan. And Brent is getting his first opportunity to play a game that he loves. Like, he's not going to come in and be this, you know, just throwing down the gauntlet because he wants to survive and he doesn't want to be the first boot. And I don't know, I found Brent to be one of the more relatable and likable characters last night. Like, you know, he did not try to be anything that he wasn't. He tried to survive, which I I appreciate. Listen, I think we can all say it's easier from the seat than it is from that seat. Um, and I don't think Brent would have ever denied that. Um, but I also understand if you're a player with him, you are going to talk shit about him if he doesn't do. You're going to be like, put your money where your mouth is. You know what I mean? So I think that there are, there are a couple of different perspectives here. I absolutely wouldn't have trusted him as a player. I, I would think he, you know, he he did play scared last night. Um, and I wouldn't, like, be mad at that necessarily, but I would be like, listen, you got a lot of shit to say, so. I mean, it's, yeah, it's week one, right? And I feel like when you have a name. It's like, day one, I think. Day one, day one, week one, day one. Um, yeah, I mean, when, when you stand out and you're a target off the bat, like, he was very close to going home. And not to skip ahead, like I I disagree strongly with you, and I disagree with Brent, who also felt like he was one of the biggest targets. He is by far not nearly as big of a threat as Jacob, Muna, or Katie. Those three people are way bigger threats than him, and I think that I feel even like you're more likely to throw Brett into Brent into a battle match than you are say Jacob or Muna or Katie? I think it depends on who is there. If the four of them are there, yes, I'm choosing Brent. But not because he's a threat, but the opposite reason. Because I think I could beat, like, exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly. Right, but, that, but you're saying he's a threat, and I'm saying he's not a threat. I'm saying he, uh, he's a name, right? He's a big name. And it's not so much, I feel like when you line him up against other people, I feel like people are going to call him out, maybe not necessarily vote him in, but call him out easier than they will call out a large majority of the cast. Yes. But I think that more than his name, it's something he mentioned last night, which is his age. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's the oldest person there. Is he the least fit? That's comparable. Who knows? I'm not doing like running tests with all these people. Would he, could he beat me in a physical competition? Absolutely. But among all the people there, do I like just based on age, size, et cetera, do I think I probably have the best bet against him? Probably. I mean, like that would be, um, I mean, he has military training. I don't know. Y'all fuck up if you forget about that. But yeah, his age makes him a bigger target, I think, than his name. Yeah. But I mean, we'll get we'll get into it later in his decision. I thought he made the right decision in what he chose to do to keep himself in the game. Like, I don't think there was anything else he could have done, but we will get there. Ooh, um, let's get there. Yeah, we are jumping. Did any did any of the the introductions stick out to you? Like any of the player introductions? I didn't know that Shireen started Google Calendar. I use that all the time. I use that daily. You know, I use that for a podcaster. That was I my do. whole podcaster like setup thing. Was like. Hey y'all, have y'all used Google Calendar? Because it's the only way I know how to use like set up. Oh my god, my life runs on Google Calendar. I so. mean, any any time I set a, a, a you know a meeting or anything in my GCal, whether it be for PodQuest or whether it be for work, immediately in my head I'm like, thanks, Shireen. You know, like that's. that's I didn't know, it, but now I am. Now yeah. I am. Always. always. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, that was it. Something that stuck out to me. Not, I mean, it didn't really stick out because we've seen it before, but I, I thought it was interesting for people maybe who are not as familiar with the minis, maybe who only watch live, right? To experience Muna for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. It was almost like getting to go back in time from when we originally saw her 
in that first mini and just the Muna experience and like, wow, who is this? Right. And I feel like we got to see that again. And it was just as, as positive and affirming as it was for all of us the first time we saw it in a mini, only now on a grander stage. I think, you know, more people I, got to see who Muna is now, which I, I appreciate. It's more, I also think it was fuller. It was a fuller experience because yeah. we, a lot of this is stuff that we learned about Muna over time right. via Twitter or various minis or podcluster or personal relationships with her. And here it was just all out there. And she has been very upfront about why she plays sequester. It's not like she plays sequester specifically because she, like, I think something that wasn't talked about enough is she's good at it. You know, that's why she plays it. She's good I mean, at she, it. She, she, she has sure, a, she saw, sure, sure showed it over the course of 90 minutes. So I mean, like, <laughs> there are a lot of avenues for her to pave the way. Black Muslim women have not been represented in almost anything. But she chose uh, gaming for a reason. because She's amazing. She's a strategic mind. She has a social mind. This is a good avenue for her. But um, she's also very, uh, but she has priorities. And I think that, you know, a lot of other people's priorities could be more singular on the game itself. And for hers to be beyond the game. And I mean, I do think people always want to represent well, always want to make friends, always want to do that. But she has all of that. And then her number one priority, which is way beyond game. Um, and and she's very open and honest about it in a way that I think is interesting because it could play against her in a game like this, right? Oh, yeah. Or it could play for her. So, um, but whether or not she considers that, she thinks that saying it is more important than than winning the game. Right. And it, it, you know, it just may be, you know? I mean, I feel like it's, it is important and it's important. And I, you know, overall it was great. I mean, getting to see the Muna and Jacob relationship was fantastic. You know, kind of. Yeah. I mean, fantastic and heart wrenching, right? Yeah. Well, it was it was fantastic for, you know, a portion of it, and everybody was, you know, this is incredible. This is incredible. And then such great editing, by the way, as it changed to Jacob's confessional, and after that, you know, heartwarming conversation. Biggest ally is Marcelo, and then. Yeah. You start to see where this is where this is leading, and yeah. that was that was interesting to me. It was it was going to go one way or another. We knew that. I had a feeling just from the preseason interviews that we did with Jacob that he, you know, there's no there's no ties. Like he he will do whatever he has to to get to the end, and he's right. At the end of the day, say what you want. Would we love Jacob and Muna sitting there strong in the final two? Absolutely. Is he smarter to go to the end with the Mar with Marcelo? Absolutely. Like he has to. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's something that we. I want to talk about two things. One, they both wore orange on the first day. He mentioned the denim, but not the orange. I think his was more of a rusted, but they both wore orange on the first day. I like he considered mean, changing though. Like he could yeah, well, like, I did. Oh, I did. Much. I did wear denim tonight, and and it's wrinkled. I'm sorry for that, but um, in honor of the Dream Alliance, which would be Muna and Jacob. Um, but I think that one thing that's easily glossed over is the fact that he didn't say that he cares more about Marcelo than he does Muna. He thinks he can beat Marcelo. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's 100% why he would rather like Muna's like, I'm the only one crazy enough to sit next to Jacob Jones. I think a lot of these people could be Jacob. Like I love Jacob, Jacob. And we can talk about how I could be very wrong because I threw away my game for Jacob. You threw away your game for Jacob. Um, so they mentioned it, they mentioned it on the show. I thought I was going to get name dropped for a second. He specifically thanked Muna for voting out dash cats and winners at war. I was like, Muda, don't vote me out. It was a tie. She listened. Worked out. That was, you know. I yeah, I, got, I mean, like, and I then you it. got dragged. I got dragged. For and, Jacob. Um, yeah. and obviously, Dash would have been a great ally for me as well. Um, honestly, I, I, that, I was in a lose-lose situation. Losing you or Dash there would have been bad for me. But, um, and then the next round, I threw away my game for Jacob. I did not try to fight for my 
my game. I instead tried to find him and make sure he was okay. And I got voted out, knowing that I was going to get voted out. Um, so I think that Jacob has a charisma and a way to- I, 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 Yeah, I was gonna mention that like, it was evident yet again. Like, it's just so easy to like him. Like his confessionals are- Oh, so good. Incredible. Like, it so won, like on par with anyone I've seen in terms of giving good confessional, Jacob Jones gives incredible, incredible confessional. Like it's hard to be, you know, say what's going on and be entertaining every time you're there. And he manages to do it through one episode. Like he was a standout to me in terms of the entertainment of this episode. Like you know, everybody knows Jacob Jones is entertaining, but he's proving yet again in another venue how entertaining he can be. He, well, he's very thoughtful, right? Yeah. Um, and he's very charismatic. And when he speaks to you, you feel like there's a genuineness there. Like the things he says, he means them. And he means them, hey, you, me, one-on-one, -on -one, just letting you know. You know, and you're just yeah. like, oh, okay, well, let me take that to heart, Jacob Jones, my new best friend. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't want to doubt his sincerity, but I think it's a huge advantage in the game. And he's clear, and he came into this game knowing that, knowing that he could be a sissy. Like Marcelo's coming in and saying, I'm a snake, I'm a snake. Jacob Jones is a snake. Jacob Jones is the snake of the season. Plus those rattle those rattle sounds where they belong, they are behind Jacob Jones because the snake. The, when we say the snake, the rest of the phrase is snake in the grass. You don't see him coming. Mm -mm. You do not see him coming. And he's going to get you. Um, so let's see what happens. I mean, this is all based on, I like that we're just into their first conversation. We have a lot more to go. We do. Well, I feel like a lot, that's the thing is like people want to work with Jacob and they want to believe what he says. Right, like even it's not like, much. Even it's not much like, later like, until Katie. Like, right, like Katie, like uh, last person on the list. I would expect you know to end up in alliance. Jake Jones is probably Spencer. Like that happened over the course of an episode, right? Like people come to him because he's endearing, and you want to work with him, and also you want him on your side because you're afraid if he's not on your side because then you know you're in trouble. But at the end of the day, he can't have everybody on his side. So people are going to leave there with some uh, some hurt feelers. Yeah, well, but he's going to... The, the trick is, and he mentioned this, how to get them to fight each other and leave him alone. But this isn't a game that really lets you do that, as Britt discovered. Right. Um, and I think that that's where he's going to... He's going to run into some issues. And I definitely think postseason... Uh, it's going to be a different relationship between him and some of these cast members. Oh yeah, it's got to be. There can only be one person, unless I mean, unless he randomly gets booted, like you know, early on, which I don't see happening. Not just that's going to be the only thing that would save his relationship. Yeah, yeah. if, if he lost real bad, real soon. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't. That's long game edit if I've ever seen it. Like he's he's going a while. Like he's. he's I mean, that's like some Game of Thrones bullshit. If he does, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Kill the king early. Spoiler, if you haven't seen King of Thrones. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. What did, um, we, what did we think of, um, I like the 619 references and the Zooms. Everybody was going crazy over that they mentioned the Zooms with Katie and Spencer. Yeah, uh, that was funny to me. I think Spencer was absolutely right. There was no, no. reason to hide that. Um, that was everybody knows. Anybody would have known aside from Brent? I don't think anybody. Knows. Yes, Jacob would. Jacob would. You think? Jacob, yeah, Jacob and Angelica are like besties, and Angelica knows like everything. Angelica is like a like a house of secrets. That's why her hair is so big. She got she got on the show. I know. She didn't Not get us. blurred. No blur from <laughs> her. I'm blurred. I get blurred. I know. Oh, gotcha. Um, if it helps any, I was planning on blurring you for. For the recap can we can we start can we start we can this isn't this isn't live we can go back what they, what they call that post edit yeah when, blur when post edit blur me okay yeah um nobody i'll have a mystery guest every week it'll just yeah. be me and a mystery guest this week yeah. it's you we'll see who it is next yeah. week <laughs> that's good i like that i like that um but no she so i mean i think jacob would know i think muno would know maybe I don't know. I think that, you know, I don't re really know who else is in 619. Um, I don't know. I think 
so many people didn't expect as many many people as there were, which was weird to me. Like they all thought that they were going to be the only many person yeah. there. No, um, so Brendan was like, Brendan was like, I had a whole like thing that everyone knows here knows me. And I was like, Yeah, bro, you thought it was just going to be you. Um, and in our preseason interviews, we had we had a lot of people who kind of felt that way. Yeah. Um, so that leads me to believe they probably didn't do as much research as like season five people might do a lot more research um but i don't think brent would have kept it quiet no no definitely not he would and so that, even so even just... so even one person knowing it's too many people right knowing. but like did did the conversation ever come up that like you know Rachel and Jay West were in a mini or did the talk ever come up that like four of these people were in all stars like probably not because you don't like remember that like nobody's gonna connect the dots that Spencer and Brendan and you know Natalie and Billy were in a mini together nor do I think it matters because I don't think they care about that there's no bond there unless I missed an invite to that group chat like they're not we have a group chat Louie is there is it you Louis, are you not in the group chat <laughs> oh my god let me put you in it right now oh tragic, my god tragic um but like that I was like we were talking this morning Oh my God. Oh, maybe I'm in. Maybe I am in there. You are in there. Okay. Anyways, anyways, what I'm saying is not, nobody, it's not nobody close. Cares. Yeah. No, but they, not, I don't think they interacted except for that one moment with Spencer and Billy. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So th that's, that's true too. But like, I, I just don't know necessarily that people would think just because people were in the same mini that they have some sort of crazy bond. 619 is infamous though. They are. They always talk about how many zooms they're in together. They yeah. had the six nineteen versus. They love to, they're probably zooming now. They are one yeah, hundred. I know they are. It's can Katie's we birthday. Take, we take a podquester on the road into their zoom. Send them into their zoom. Be like you are live on podquester. Take it to a new level. We need those ratings, man. It's Katie's birthday, so I know they are. Is it me? HBT. They, like, I, like, I know for a fact, I was told they were doing today. Um, but, like, they are, I mean, like, they're infamous for their Zooms. They yeah. Zoom all the time. They had their showdown on um, the private mini showdown. They're, like, I honestly, I don't think of many bigger duos you could, you do Jacob and Muna, the only bigger duo you could probably do in pod um, is, like, Katie and Emily. Yeah, maybe but that's the thing. Like, I don't think I would have known, honestly, that they were close. Like, I Katie don't, I don't, Spencer. Yeah, I don't think I would have known. I'm a historian, but like, I would um, have no idea. I wouldn't have put that together that they were both in. Because also, Spencer didn't even play the showdown, so like, I would not. Do you think have that was purposeful? Maybe. Mm, interesting. Interesting point. But anyway, uh, enough about six nineteen. Their head. Their heads. Just, no, but I, I mean, I would have, if somebody had told me that Katie was in six, that Spencer was in 619, and I wouldn't have known offhand. Everyone knows yeah. I'm terrible with dates. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, know would have. I don't even know if Brent would have, to be honest. It would have come out. They would have slipped. That's yeah. the thing. They weren't preparing to lie. They would have slipped. Yeah. Um, I, I would have been like, oh, fuck, they must be close. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it, it's apparent anyways through just how you interact with people. If you're on a Zoom with them, you know, three times a week, four times a week, you're just going to be more naturally close to them than you are. Um, yeah, even if it's like the person you're least close with, yeah. you're still close to them if you yeah. see them three times a week. Um, but Speaking of, like, things like people being close, like, this was what another thing that blew my mind was, like, first alliance that we see is Billy and Josh. And that delighted me to no end. Well, that's the second alliance, right? Right. We thought we had the first four. Oh, first four. Right, 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 right. Yes. That lasted. And, I mean, do we, do we, I feel like there was there's also this, no, because there's also the six and there's also the women's alliance and there's also like, I don't there know. There wasn't a woman's alliance. There was a woman of color alliance. Katie was notably not in that room. Uh, interesting. interesting. Uh, but, I do think, yeah, the four thing was a BS. The five, it was, it, it was as much worth as Katie being like, 
first five in, last five out. In fact, I think that Brendan said first in, first out when he was talking about the metaphor. So yeah. I feel like you're just required. If like you're required in any reality show, if you're the first group of people into it, like you have to say it. If you don't say it, then you know it's just weird. Like you got to be like, hey, we're going together to the end. This group. And it works sometimes. This room, it works. This room. When it does work sometimes. At the, at the end of the day, like it boils down to any real. Like it just clicked in my mind. Like even the minis. This yeah, room, starting room, starting room is the equivalent of being the first people in a house. Yeah. Right? Is your mind blown as much as mine? Um, yes. No, I already got that. <laughs> never, never I'm sorry. Before, but it's essentially like that's your yeah, first people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the people that, you, that you're at least artificially saying, yes. hey, we have a special bond because we were the only ones here right we are discoverers in a new land let's stick together do you um i mean you take a car together do you make i mean obviously you can't say anything but do you make eyes you're like they had on i think they had blind didn't they have blindfolds on maybe yeah did yeah. i make that up they may have blindfolds on i'd still do the eyebrow thing though they could see i could get my they, they got the yellow does an all-stars for that remember Oh, they yeah, were like, yeah, stop yeah, making yeah. faces, stop making faces. And I yeah. was like, I can't help it. This is my Josh, face. Josh Williams could not, could not stop. He was they too, almost put us in the back. They almost put too us in the excited. Back. He was too excited about the group. Yeah. Um, but I think that, yeah, so Billy and, and uh, Josh become a, a pair yes. um, quickly. And I was very excited to see that Billy, I felt like Billy had been talking up a big logic game pre-season. Yeah. Uh, and I was really excited that she was still talking energy and vibing. And I don't know if I had misunderstood the way she was talking pre-game or what, but I was glad that she stuck to, to me, the Billy classics, which is her gut yeah. and her emotions. Yeah. She's got good guts and emotions. They've taken her far. She needs to stick to her winning game. And I was glad to see that. Like, I don't know how I feel about Josh still, like as a player, as entertainment, I know how I feel about Josh, 100% yeah, yeah. on board. I don't know if I think he's gonna screw her over, but he seems to be sincerely about some Billy and I was glad that she was open to to, to feeling his vibes instead of just like and I think playing that those logic. Are, those are the people that if Billy is gonna play a winning game, like that's what she needs to do, right? She needs to align with the Joshes, with the Rachels, right? Like that's, I think that's smartest for her is she needs those people on her side. Like, I think she's in a very good spot. If you asked me the people who are in the best spot in the game, like I would, I would put her near the top. Cause I, I, I think she's pretty well protected in that nobody's has any interest in, in going after her anytime soon. I agree. So we see that relationship form. We see a lot of other small alliances occur, um, one-on-ones everywhere, uh, including the six that you mentioned, yes, which got a surprising amount of airtime to me. Um, but apparently because it mattered a lot more than I think I would have put stock in it. If I had been in that room, would I have put that much stock into it? No. No. Who was the first would, person who mentioned it? Like Jay West, I think. Jay West mentioned it. Okay. I think so. I would I I would like to be corrected, but I think he was like somebody said, I feel good about the people in this room. And I don't remember if it was him or not, but then he was like, I've been trying to get each one of you all alone. Yeah. And you know, Katie was very much like big threat tech to work together. The issue was not all of those threats are on the same level. No. Jay West was Jay West and, man out of that. Well, so was Marcelo. I don't think that either yes. of them. I don't think Marcello that anybody was close enough with Jacob and Muna that I think he can be included in that and not have to worry. I think he can be included, but I don't think that if you were making a list of people who were the biggest threats, his name would have been oh, on right. that list. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think I mean, that you would put Shireen in there, right? Like you would definitely put Shireen in there if we were looking at. Yes. Now let's name everybody who is in the alliance. It's Jay West, Muna, Katie, Marcelo, Brent, um, and Jacob. And, and Jacob. Yeah. So that's of the six. Yeah. I don't think that, you know, necessarily. Yeah. I would have put sure. 
I don't know if I'd put Shireen in there. I think Shireen, Marcelo, and Jay West are the odd men out of the bigger threats just because they are well known, but not well known for playing sequester necessarily. I mean, Marcelo, that's what he's known for, but he's not got the reputation that Katie, Jacob, Muna have. Um, and so I don't think that Jay West and Shireen have the reputation for for sequestered that the others do. So who would they may like who they would are, replace them with though. I don't think you need to replace them. Right. Yeah. Like I think a group of four is better. I mean, early on, you want to have majority, I guess. Like, for example, and we'll get into, like, what the challenge, like, the more people you could have on your side for this safety exile chain. The I'm just saying, if I was in that room, I would call it BS. I would call BS. And Marcel was like, Marcel was like mm, JK, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, and Katie was, seemed to have put the most stock in it, and yet she was also already calling BS on it at the same time. Being like, I'm thinking of the inner dynamics. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I don't think there was a single person. A lot of alliances in the beginning are just us saying what we need to say because we're in a room together. And to not say it is more suspicious than to pretend that we're going to work together, right? Yeah, that's fluff. You want everybody on your side, just in yeah. case. Just in case. And even, and even if you don't believe that they're going to be on your side, you have to say it. Yeah. yeah. You can't turn down an alliance and you can't not, I mean, sitting awkwardly in a room with somebody we saw what people use that as an excuse. Be like, you didn't talk to me, so. Yeah, that's true. So, I, so I we that, yeah, that brings us nicely into the actual, you know, challenge. What do we call it? Challenge? Vote? The challenge, right? Challenge, yeah, the yeah, challenge. challenge. <laughs> which was the, straight straight out of the minis. Which I, I I'm curious if like all of them are just going to be straight up like, oh, I've played that, you know. Well, the battle match wasn't from Mini, unless you consider Jigsaw from a Mini. Right. right. Uh, so right. I think like that they're going to be... the main task, maybe. Yeah, I think that they're going to be a combination, I guess is what I'm saying. But yeah, that one was interesting because obviously we played, I played that first in Winners at War 2. That's where it debuted. Yeah. Um, and out of nowhere, Marcelo got the safety. Because he, uh, uh, he envisioned it. He manifested, he, he manifested it from, the, it. He from manifested. the sequester gods. Yeah. yeah. You know, the bots themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so he was given safety, and then he had the job of putting the first person in exile. And I thought that was where we first saw Josh come to interest. You know, we had the whole thing with the LOS. Um, Which, let's, let's, you know, I'm, I'm willing... Um, Proud Papa last night, but that being said, never go idle hunting day one, never go LOS hunting day one, bad look. But I mean, you know, he also probably felt like when he saw the cast, he was like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I mean, that's the only reason you do that, right? Like if you think you're uh, immediately in a pickle, you start tearing apart beds and trying to find, you know, little green things. And we've seen it work too. We've yeah. seen... Butler and Winners of War II got an LOS and used it, uh, and he was the presumed first boot. Now, Jamie in Winners at War One found that LOS, and yeah. he saved himself. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Whilst crying. Whilst I crying. I could not get it with clear eyes and a full heart, but he <laughs> got it sobbing. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, an LOS when you're in danger is not the worst thing to look for. Uh, but you have to be very sure that it's you because yeah. otherwise it's you. And as much as people say it was the LOS, it was it like you yeah, said, that's the it, thing. it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether he was searching or not. They would have found a reason. Yeah. They would have found a reason. I mean, Brent was already like, I don't trust this bro. He said that he liked me and I don't like that. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I was like, all right then. Um, <laughs> I guess I would have been screwed too. I've been listening for a while. <laughs> uh, one uh, underrated scene of of the night: uh, Josh jumping up to try to get to see the top shelves. I mean, between that and Brendan doing his uh, his little 
I was calling it Hayuken. Apparently, it's something like um, from The Incredibles or something. I don't mm. know. Charades were apparently involved. Mm. Um, but <laughs> yeah, between those were the best moments of physical humor. How do, uh, how do you feel about <laughs> Brendan's theme music? He has his own oh, song. I love that. I love are it. We, are we on board with that? I'm over, over Spencer's? I'm, I'm controversial. More on board with the Spencer, Spencer theme song. Here's the thing. I think Spencer's fit, fit. Like, I honestly was like, oh, this is military, and I do not like it. Um, And it worked for me for Spencer. Like, I was like, yeah. Makes well, sense. I like it because I feel like with Spencer, it's like, it's poking at him a little, right? It's yeah. a little bit in, in jest. It's like, you know, Captain America, like and he's, you know, he believes what he's saying so much, and it comes across as kind of preachy as they said, that it makes it funny. With yeah. Brendan, like he made it clear early on, like he's playing a role. And we've seen this role played a dozen times in, in different reality shows. Like it's the Tyler Crispin 101. Like I'm a surfer bro, you know, I'm just here for a good time. But really behind the scenes, I'm a gamer. The problem is they all know it already. So, I mean, there's not, you know, there's not a lot to it when everybody already knows that there's more to you than that. You see, that's why I think that it's actually poking at him because I think he's like, oh, they already know I'm a gamer. I can't play that up. And instead, what we're seeing is that maybe Brendan is actually a goofball and kind of like ridiculous as a person. Like he, like we have the super cut of him being like, oh, they already know me. I can't do it. And then he's like, this is a bed for a dog. And you're like, so I'm not sure if we're supposed to think that Brendan is actually kind of ridiculous as a person or if we think that he's still trying to play the game like that. Because to me, it's just pointing out how ridiculous he is as a person. Yeah. Like, he is a smart gamer, but he's also kind of... Like, he's he is large, as, as Walt Whitman said. He contains multitudes. Yeah, but I still um, feel like he'll try to use that if he, like, goes far as like, ha... Huh fooled you all really i was a gamer behind that laid back funny surfer bro i guess we'll like, see but to me if he is using that strategy it is working nobody thought about putting bridge in that no He's in a good and everybody place. trusts him yeah. and he wasn't included as a biggest threat situation mm -hmm. no he's in a he's, he's in a very good spot too along with billy i feel like he's in one of the best spots I winter agree. Vibes, early winter vibes. And you called that in the last, I, I give that one to you. You you said that very early on. And I, I definitely see it after last night. Like You're frozen and it's terrifying. This is a moment of Susie. We collect. We think about Susie. I did yeah. call that. Oh, there we go. I can hear you now, but yeah. no, you're not moving. You're not moving. It's terrifying. There you are. There you are. You're a person. There You're a person. Go. There we go. Um, where were we? Did you hear yeah. me talking about myself? <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard, I heard all of it. I never lost connection. Um, but yeah, I think I think he'll be he'll be going. All, he'll be on our screens a while. I think. Yeah, but okay. So back to Josh and back to that moment. I I think that's when we saw Josh really come to light as an entertainer, and oh, not yeah. just as a. Ugh. He's looking for the LOS. Oh, he's trying to suck up to Brent. Oh, he's having these intense connections to somebody we like, Billy, but is she going to have the capital to save him? He's got to, like, you know what I mean? His story up to that point was kind of very clearly drawn. And then Marcelo was like, so who do you think that you're going to save? And he said, oh, I think I'm going to save that for my own conversation. Yeah. I don't think I need to tell you that right now. And I was like, he said what he said to you he's not gonna like he's not scared he is not scared he's not gonna be outplayed and he's not gonna be like intimidated by these people in their relationship he doesn't he's pissed that he's first moved but he's also not gonna be intimidated he's not gonna be threatened you know yeah. what I mean and it wasn't what I, I it wasn't the reaction I expected either because like from what I've seen from him from the minis like he is you know he'll go off Inicable. Yeah. Well, no, like he's willing to. Oh, like, the opposite. The opposite. He's a uh, whole fight. Like he'll like, he's one of the most combative people I've seen in a mini. 
like just okay. in terms of, of, you know, yelling at people and such. And he essentially, I mean, we saw that later on, but when he got put up, he was just like, whatever. Right. Like he was just kind of like, okay. Cause he knew he couldn't do anything about it at that moment. Like he was stuck. He was the first one in and he knew he had to make inroads other places. And I mean, he still basically got voted out unanimously aside from Brent, but he still, he made inroads with people. Like we saw he made inroads with Shireen. He made inroads with Rachel. Like he is creating bonds, despite the fact that he was very low on the bond of the totem pole. Yeah. He just, he can't make bonds with that, that six, honestly, like those four people I mentioned that are the top thirds of the six, he's not being able to infiltrate. Right. Um, but he doesn't need to, mm -mm. he doesn't need to, if he is playing with the others. And I really admire that. But more than that, yeah. Dude's good TV. Like you felt him turn. Dude like got chaotic evil up in yeah. his face. He was like, I think I'll keep that for myself. And I was like, oh shit, dude. He did it a few um, times too when he was in the room with Brendan and Spencer. And they were like, what are you gonna do? He's like, oh, well, I guess you'll find out in about two minutes. And walked yeah. out. And they were like, well, that was annoying. Yeah. <laughs> that was some classic mini action too. Like, I just like when somebody leaves a room and you're like, well, that was, you know what I mean? Yeah. That reminded me of a mini. Yeah. <laughs> Where you're like, yeah, yeah, cool. And then you're like, yeah. <laughs> um, but I thought that uh, he, yeah, his his turn was was. I was very excited. I was almost like, all right, get people back into exile because I want to see what Josh does now. Um, and he had he had no plan really, and he really had no ideas of what were going to happen because he didn't have the capital to get anything done. He was just ready to fight. That was um, that was his only option. Like in both situations, like in the chain and in the vote, he had no options. It was just him. He was the easy boot, and you know it was that's just what it was going to be. And his only option was to to fight, and he he definitely did. Um, I think once he got put there, it got interesting in terms of. I mean, I guess we should talk a little bit about Jay West. Um, it was a Jay Westy move. It was a very Jay West move. And like, I kind of get it, like in terms of not being afraid. I've never been one to be afraid of being in exile because it does give you the power. And as long as you can arrange the other people who are going with you, it's probably smarter to be in exile, honestly. But not in Jay West's case, because Jay West doesn't know anyone. Like, you know, like if you're Katie, for example, even though she didn't want to go, she desperately didn't want to go. Katie's a player that can go and make a move and it actually be valuable. Jay West was never going to be there and be in a safe spot necessarily because he doesn't have those kind of bonds with people. I think that, you know, Josh wanted Katie there. Jay West wanted Katie there. They would have been better off going for another person who was not going to have a start like Katie's play like Katie wasn't was in Winners at War 2 she wasn't at this moment but she, you know the way that we played it was well documented <laughs> she knows what happened like she knows that we put Sharifa and Jalen in exile to get either Josh or um, Ethan out that we had a plan in place to put our allies in in exile so she knew exactly how to play it like going for katie now did you know that katie like they didn't know that katie would has played that 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 same one before brendan has played that safety in exile of course in private winners at war was anybody else in private winners at war uh, besides brendan brendan marcello I, has marcello ever won no not Spencer. No. I, so I think Brendan and Brendan's, Brendan's, Brendan's the only one who's actually played that. Yeah. And yet he didn't take control of the situation, which I think is smart because it's too early to yeah, and that didn't need to. But that's what happened to Kaylee, Katie. She was trying very hard to take control of the situation too fast, right? Like right. It was going to be Josh. She didn't need to go around saying it was going to be Josh. Right. She wasn't the first person to say it should be Josh. But because she said it so often, she became associated with uh, Josh 
anti-Josh Brigade. Right. Well, it was, um, it was Shireen was the one who originally said Katie's name, which I thought was really interesting, was that Shireen started that moving forward. And it wasn't necessarily, I don't believe, an anti-Josh thing. It was just that she didn't feel close with Katie and had no conversations with her. Right. But it was also interesting because that came right after she so shireen is the first one who said josh too yeah that's true she was the one who was like why is he running around getting an los why is she doing this why is he doing this so she said josh then josh came to her and shireen is an emotional player which i vibe with um like honestly of all the players and of course i'm doing that i'm doing like mm, who i be in this situation shireen 100 percent i'd be shireen like she even feels bad for Katie after she. I loved. Katie. I loved that talk that she gave her. She was like, "Katie, Harvard, yeah. back up, girl. Yeah. You're it's not at home yet. You don't give yeah. up. Yeah, great. Because I feel like you can't. After that, you can't really be that mad at her, right? Like, no, you can't. <laughs> I, I don't know how you react, but yeah, you can. I mean, I, I, it kind of, like that kind of speech comes off a lot better when you're saving someone than when you're putting them in exile. Right. So um, words are a little meaningless in actions. But anyway, the point is, I think that it was, she did say, I'm going to save Josh. And the next thing we see her do is say Katie's name. So I do think that Katie wouldn't have come up if it weren't for the fact that Shereen was trying to save Josh. And I think like Katie, here's the, the one hiccup and what we would typically see in a mini is that Katie played it perfectly in terms of making sure that her allies were with her. But the problem is in this situation, someone is going to a battle, right? As, as someone's going to have to battle and get picked from those people. And we've, this has actually, I, I, I racked my brain and it may have been done more than once, but I remember in at least one mini, it was like, Lana, Kevin Falk, and like two other people as the four sequestered and exiled. And one of them was voted out and then they dragged someone, right? So that's the closest that I've ever seen that happen. And that's essentially what it is, is you don't want to be exiled, even though it may be beneficial to take a target out because then you're at risk to having to go in, which we saw with Brent who wanted nothing to do with it, despite the fact that it may have been you know, beneficial to go in to keep your numbers and to gain some trust. Well, I think that that's where Katie should have been like, and maybe she was and we didn't see it. But if I were Katie, I'd be like, and he's going to drop, he's going to battle match me and I'm ready to go. He's going to battle match me. He's going to call. Now, Josh tried to counteract that by being like, I'm not necessarily going to go for Katie. But the animosity was really clear. Like he wouldn't say anybody else's name. Brett was like, say anyone else's name. And he was like, the name is Katie. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna battle match her. You were to battle match her. So if I were Brent, I would have voted for Katie for sure. Still think that was the right choice for Brent. But if I were Katie, I'd be telling everybody, listen, yes, the battle match is scary. It's a scary possibility, but let's be honest, he's coming for me. Um, so no matter what he says, I'm his number one choice. He can't drag everybody. He can't battle match everyone. He's going to battle match me because he thinks I'm the one who put the target on his back. Right. Um, and I'm prepared to battle match, but I don't want to be voted out. Yeah. Um, that I think that's the move. Um, in the end, it came down to it felt like who was scarier, Josh or Katie. And they were both pretty freaking scary, dude. Like Josh is a good like foot shorter than some people. Yeah. Who cares? Dude matter. was scary. Well, they, also, they don't know his puzzle prowess. Like they don't know. I, I doubt well, they don't know where the challenge is either. Well, that too. But I mean, you have to imagine that there's only so much you can do in that. Like I would have guessed probably a puzzle. Like that would have been the first thing that popped into See, mind. See, that might have been your guess, but like, you have to think about your worst fear too, which could be right. something physical for me, yeah. things like yeah. that, right? You're gonna, you assume puzzle, you think you prepare for whatever is gonna be worse for you. Right. Um, but I think he, he was scary. He was staring people down. He was like, this is what I'm saying and I mean it. And I am saying it like a villain. He is the villain of the show, the end period. Um, and I love watching that. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I mean, he did like he did what you had to do with Brent. Like he had to threaten. I mean, you can't threaten everybody, but he threatened to somebody. And if Brent didn't make that move, he definitely would. There, were, there was no, because he even said in the confessional that he wants to show that his word is good early on. So Brent absolutely would have been taken into the battle match. And I, I'd say odds are Brent's going home in that situation. So you have to, and that's the thing, like we're talking about, will Katie be bitter? I don't think you can be that bitter. Like Brent should have told her what he was doing, but that being said, like, he was threatened and was going to go home essentially if he didn't do that. So he threw a vote knowing that it wouldn't matter. To me, you can't get bent out of shape out of that. It didn't mean she got put up. It did, made no difference at the end. I think that he handled that all wrong. He should have told her beforehand. Um, barring that, he should have been straight up during the thing. Like he was like, oh, you won me over. You convinced me. You're a good kid. He called him a good kid. Loved it. You're a good kid. You're he should have been real. Wrong. He should have been like, listen, you threatened to battle match me. And so I voted the way you said to vote because I didn't want to go in a battle match. You are not going home because of me. I held up my end of the deal. Right. That would have been my, two, and, and like then I think Katie would have respected it more. But being like, I wanted you here over her. Yeah, that's true. That that's weird. not the way to do it. That's I mean, I feel like he was still trying to control he, him because he was still afraid that for whatever reason he would still bring him in. So he wanted to butter him up even more, which probably wasn't needed. I don't think it was necessary. I think Josh respects the game too much for that. Yeah. Um, and I think Josh respects himself too much for that. Honestly, yeah. um, like I don't think Josh would have would have. I think Josh would have been like, "All right, I done did what I did, and I got the vote I need that I thought I needed." Um, you know, and we saw he didn't, he wasn't originally going to pull Jay West in, no. even though Joe, Jay West had lied to him. Well, so, so, so for me, that is the biggest, like, that's the thing I want to talk about most was that, was that moment. Cause I found it, I don't know. It was a little heartbreaking to me to watch it happen. Like you don't want anybody to go in. Like I was going to, with that whole group, I was going to be disappointed with whoever went home, but he was taking Katie he was 100% taking Katie. And I like Jay West felt the need to like antagonize. I don't know, but that's not, I don't think it was that though. Like we talk, like everybody's talking about him getting humble pie and stuff. Like I didn't even view it as that because he was, it was clear in his words he was scared and he didn't want to go in. But it's like he couldn't help himself but still say, like, but I don't care if you do. I'll still do it. Like, I'll still go in. I'll still beat you. It's like he felt the need to say that, you know, to show that bravado when he didn't need to because that bravado really, at the end of the day, wasn't there. Like, he didn't want anything to do with it. He did not want to risk being the first boot, but it's just like he was so used to, like, what we saw in, in season three. Like, it was a very different way of doing it. In season three, he was legit angry. In season three, he was legit, like, upset and was like, I want to take you out. He didn't feel that way with Josh. He even said after he liked Josh. It's just he couldn't help himself because he felt like he needed to put on that persona of, I'll take on anybody. I can do this. I'll beat you. I don't care what you do. When I think it was interestingly, like, the opposite of Katie's. Because Katie was like, all right, if you're going to do this, you're a wimp. But she was like, I'll beat you for sure. But you're a wimp for doing it for this reason, this reason, this reason. You're making the wrong choice for this reason, this reason, this reason. I'm going to talk about how much you suck if you do it. But you can do it, I guess. Um, whereas he was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But if you do, I'm going to beat your ass. Like, they were the opposites in some ways. Where she was like, I'm going to win. But beyond that, if you win, you're going to look like a fool. So either way, you like it's a no win situation for you. Whereas Jay West was like, I'm so scared, but I'm going to beat you. And it was like, mm. yeah. so I could beat you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I felt like Jay West provided a situation where he looked like the better option. Yeah. Um, what, because whether you lost or won to Jay West, you kept a good rap going like you know what i mean whereas if you lost to katie katie's gonna talk so much shit about you yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean you don't want an angry an angry katie coming back for you and if, if you and if you won against katie she's 
you're still not going to go back into the house with a good reputation. Also true. I think I think that picking the person who you're against um, is always hard. And she would have she she was successfully spinning that narrative. That's not why he was picking her. He was picking her because he thought that she said his name first. But the narrative she was spinning is you picked me because I was the because I voted against you, even though I had to vote against you. I mean, I don't know why he revealed her vote. That was to me a waste of that was a waste of a reveal. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think the two that mattered were Jay West and Brent at the end of the day, because we Katie was going to get taken because of creating, you know, in his mind, creating that narrative to start. Um, yeah. I don't know, like, who do you think is better to challenge? Like, there's two ways- Who would I want to challenge? Yeah. Out of like, puzzle, if you're, if you're, or? As, as, no, like, if you're in Josh's spot, right? Like, in my thinking is that I don't think Katie's ever going to align with you, right? Like, I don't think you're ever going to mend that, that you two are going to work together. Whereas Jay West, I think, is an ally for you. Um, and you take I would go for Jay West. You I would go for Jay West. I've got to be honest, even though I wouldn't feel, I feel like Jay West would be a stronger ally for me as far as like he would actually align with me versus Katie. I think Jay West is going to be the easier person to beat and the person with some of the least social capital to worry about. Um, here's two things that I noticed about Jay West that I would take in consideration. He folds real easy. Muna was like, you said my name. And he was like, no, I mean, yeah, I did. Muna, you're Muna. I'm going to say your name. Yeah. Then he said to Katie, he was like, I know. I wanted to work yeah. with you, Katie. All right, I'm lying. I'm lying. I came for you. Like, he folds easily, which to me, I would want to see in a challenge. If I'm going into a challenge, I want to go with the guy who I can yell at. And he's going to be like, all right. Yeah. Or, or um, ask them their favorite sandwich, also an option. There's a there's a suggestion out there that that's a reference to Winners at War Two, um, because Katie was part of an Alex sandwich um, of Alex Brizard and Alex Day, who was of course Brendan's brother. Okay. So there's this, there's been some suggestion that Josh was antagonizing him about leaving Katie in. I'm not 100. percent I don't. That's, bored with that's a bit of a stretch. I know we. Wanna, I agree. I know we want to connect everything back to us, but that. I mean, <laughs> to me, it was clearly about me because I like sandwiches. I thought um, it was just about like a sequester bot reference of like majority rules. Like, what's your? Oh uh, yeah, that's a cute one. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows why the hell he asked about his name? But I'm saying like that's the person I would rather meet in a challenge. Somebody who is maybe I could intimidate a little bit just. With, some trash talk because yeah. he folded beneath Muna and he folded beneath Katie. Um, and I, yeah, I want to pick a guy who will fold. You know, yeah. I like a guy who will yeah. fold. My, that's my, 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 that's my sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> my only argument there is that I agree, probably smarter move to make sure you get past the first round. And at the end of the day, that's what matters most. You want to live another day. But when you're in Josh's position and you're bottom of the totem pole and like, we're all in the Josh Mosh. I'm the leader of the Josh Mosh. Everybody needs to get on board. It seems like everybody has gotten on board. A lot of people have gotten on board the Josh Mosh. Oh yeah. Y'all late to the train, but Louie yeah. is conducting that train. Choo choo. That being said, I want to, I want to slow down a little bit on the Josh Mosh. Cause I also feel like he's still not in a great spot. Right. And my, yeah. my thought was that if you're at the bottom you also need to put yourself in a better position going back. And I feel like if you take Katie out, all of a sudden there's a person who has actively been trying to bring you out of the game now removed. You keep Jay West in as a person you can possibly work with. Right. I feel like, especially. But if he didn't do someone, anything for you. He voted, he lied to you and voted against you. Yeah. What use is that ally? I mean, that ally is nothing. It's it's better than someone working against. If you're Josh who believes, and he said preseason in our interview, that he could beat anybody, right? Like, I'll beat anybody in a battle match. Like, he wasn't afraid. Like, he, he firmly believed that anybody who challenged him, he could take down, which I think I, I believed it then. I still believe it now but you can't do it every single time because oh, the I heard, I, I don't know. I think Katie, I think Katie could do it 
in the in a, in a puzzle. I think they would have been closer than him and yeah. Jesus. Oh, it definitely would have been closer. It def- but I think the reward there is higher than the risk in terms of you take out the person. But Katie made the risk so big for him. Katie was like, if you take me out, you are going to be seen as a wimp. You're going to be somebody seen as somebody who doesn't stick to their word because you're not taking out Jay West who voted against you. You're going to be seen as somebody who, who votes bitter, who's taking out the person who they were up against instead of taking out somebody who didn't vote for them or who was supposed to be their ally. Like, I think there was a high risk either way, but I also think that, I think that you, I, I don't know. I'd rather take out a useless ally and prove my worth to bigger threats. Yeah. Then, I mean, I think either way he's going to uphold that all. But Jay West wasn't doing anything for him. So if he can step over Jay West to get to the next stage, that's going to be a bigger thing. Especially now that he has Shireen on his side, who oddly seems to have a lot of social capital. She is the one who put Josh's name out there. She is the one who put Katie's name out there. Those were the two people who were who it came between. So I mean, he's got some influential people on his side who don't want to see him go. Um, and his and now Brent might need to align with him. Yeah. Do we think now? And, and like that's do we think immediately? Like now we just throw he gets thrown in every week, or do you think now people are afraid to throw him in because he's proven he can do it once, and you don't want to challenge him? I don't think he proved himself. If you're asking, yes, I see what you're saying there as far as if he beat Katie, I think people would be more scared of him. I don't think that Jay, people have not seen Jay West play enough that they're like, oh, no, you got out one of the best. Right. You know what I mean? Um, that, 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 and that's that's more so my point is that when you look at the cast, there were a few people right off the bat that you think, okay, potential first boot, Right. And Josh and Jay West were both in that because they were so out of the loop in terms of relationships, in terms of minis and things like that. And I feel like one of them taking out the other doesn't benefit them in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I think that the conflict between Katie and Josh could be beneficial. You could always use a conflict as a smoke screen if you're one of the two people in there. Um, the, you know, everyone knows his target and they don't seem to care that much that he's going for Katie. Jacob was willing to let her go. This is something that I talked about preseason. When you have that many shields in there, your shields are not going to be close together. You're not going to be able to work with all of the big targets. So when you go, so you don't have that tightness. Yeah. You don't have that. I have to stick with my people because you've got 18 other people to pick from, or in this case, like 10 other people to pick on. Yeah. So I think that they are willing to let Josh and Katie go for each other. Um, and that could be a big benefit too. Yeah. Have we, have we talked about every possible <laughs> scenario? I think so. Very possibly. Yeah. 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 Um, it was, you know, I was sad for, like, it was very clear how upset Jay West was to be the first boot. And yeah. that, that hurt my soul because we knew, I mean, I said it as soon as we did his interview, I felt like he was one of the people who was most like grateful to be there. And he was so happy to get a second chance and redeem himself. And to see it end that quickly is disheartening. Like it, he put himself in the spot, yes, like it was his own doing, but it was still sad to see that yeah, he was crushed. He was, he was very evidently crushed. By it wasn't... Whether like whether or not he could have gotten out of it, he didn't deserve to go home first. Like, does anybody deserve to go home first? That's a quite good question. Blah blah blah. But you know, it it was heartbreaking. Certainly, I don't think that he like it was not somebody you felt good about. You're like, yes. you know, what I mean? like I think he would have continued to be entertaining TV. Um, and yeah, I I I'm a I don't know what are we calling Jay West fans? A Westy? No, that's not good. That's not good. No, no Someone way. come up with something. Yeah. Um, I saw that we have a we have a Brent Walgamob group name now. The Walga the, Mob. The Walga Mob. Okay. I can get it. I that. like it. I think it's cute. The, Katie. The, Katie's are the fucking vengeance. I I love we talked about that. We texted about that. That is that, Jalen, Jalen Jones came up with that. That is in, incredible upset. in every way. That is the name of my next band. Um it's it's great. I 
Yeah. You have to have a song just for Katie then. Oh, absolutely. It's called Katie. Yeah. <laughs> that's our, our first thing. Um, yeah. That's yeah, everybody. Never everybody Josh 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 so Josh I'm eager. I'm, I know that, like, yeah, Jay West has his fans. They brought him back for a reason. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's not we, over necessarily. You know, we got to. Let's let's hope maybe he, there's still some some hope that he can he can come back. I feel like we're gonna feel that way probably about however many people are are battling to come back. But you know, all depends what it is. One say my hopes are extremely high, but there's a shot. Yeah, I I I don't know. He he's got a way of tugging at your heart. You know. Yeah. And uh, I really felt for him. So um, I think face, first week's definitely the hardest even harder in this situation, which is pretty much an all-stars game. Um, and I think he's going to come back stronger if he comes back and hopefully a little less willing to just fold. He has to, he's got to come up with some new lies yeah. on top of his lies. He's got to lie better. Um, third, third time's the charm, right? Third time, yeah. I guess. Be, yeah, third time. Now, I think we talked about Everyone, pretty much. I don't think we've mentioned Rachel much, or um, I think Natalie was there. Taxes. 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 You know, not enough representation about, you know, correlating taxes to strategic gameplay that I've I seen in my life. And I've watched a lot of reality shows. I haven't seen enough of it. Glad we got it last week. Very good. I actually think it's interesting, though, because I would think it's the opposite. I think that she's probably good at her job because she's observant, not she's observant because of her job. <laughs> and I'm like, I think that this was like a weirded, twisted way to connect it to her job. You know what I mean? I was like, this was kind of just strange. I would like, uh, okay, so next season, right, assuming we do interviews, assuming I'm not there or something, right? Like, I want to ask every single person to correlate their job with their gameplay i'm gonna ask each and every one. i think they could do it i think they could do it i mean what's jacob do he's a social me media marketing person that's basically what this is true there's the 17 account managers who can all discuss data collection managing accounts is like managing people right mm -hmm. like yeah um, yeah but the but yeah i mean i think she and rachel both seem kind of sad about their placements Mm -hmm. And about ending up in exile, they're in a good spot. Nobody's yeah. thinking about them. Mm -hmm. I think they what they need to do is cause more turmoil between people and just show them that they're a number. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, they get to kind of, I, I was a little surprised that Rachel was like, oh, I thought I was in better with people. Like Natalie was like, I'm at the bottom here. Yeah, that kind of really sucks. But Rachel was like, I was really surprised nobody saved me. And I was like, oh, do you not have as good of a read on this as I thought you did? That's what surprised me. I, I almost correlate it to like, maybe this is a jump, but like a new mini player, right? Who goes in and creates some bonds in the early rounds, has some good talks with people, thinks that they're in, but still gets voted out first because the rest of the cast knows each other, right? Like regardless of the fact that you're creating inroads with people, the inroads that are already there that have spanned for months are still stronger than the one with you that started three hours ago, you know? Okay, I disagree in a mini game. I think that in a mini game, a new player can can do it. I But I'm very strong on in-game shit. I think in this situation, yeah, the bonds that, that they made last night are not going to be, and not only that, but she doesn't have the social capital to offer as well, right? right. Like, if you keep Katie safe, um, which they didn't do, that gives you a relationship with Spencer, with Brendan, with Brent, with Jacob, with Muna. You know, it gives you another relationship. If you keep Rachel safe, you have a lot more... doubt in those relationships Agreed. and you also don't know who she's bringing with her and you don't know how sincere those relationships are but i think um, that's why she needs to be aware enough now to be like okay well like 
I was just surprised she was people together. I was just surprised she wasn't aware until that point. Right. And that's the, the key of a good player is like, okay, well, it's clearly not me. So now I can't just stand back and wait for it. I need to make it happen. So now she Same thing with Natalie. Happen. Yeah. Natalie realized it and she, she made that step. And I think that Natalie, I said it before, I think Natalie's going to be a one-on-one player. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out this season. I don't know if there's going to be room or time for one-on-one conversations. It seems a lot more difficult this season. Yeah. And I think that that could hurt her. Um, uh, Cause she, she's, I'm not going to say an introvert or quiet, but she's certainly never going to be the loudest voice in the room. No. And I think it helps her as numbers dwindle. I feel like she'll have more power and more opportunity to have her say, but right now she's in the background and that's, you know, that'll probably get her a ways. I can't imagine, you know. I mean, I can't imagine anybody going for her. Right. Exactly. Right. Agreed. But we'll see what happens. Um, I saw that little women of color Alliance. I want that to happen. I want that to be real. I don't know. We never heard I, another thing about it after that. <gasps> it was basically in like a, you know, a segment it was showing all about the Luna. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, but, you know, my heart did leap at that. I was like, girls, do it, do it. It's so hard to watch the show because I want certain people to align who are not aligning. You're like, oh, just do it right. Do it the way I would do it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of fan fiction is being written right now where Muna and Jacob sit at the end together and are awarded the first of our double title. Yeah. Uh, like the Hunger Games? They just, they yes. just leave together. Be great. Um, I've got Katie in that situation. I've got Shireen in that situation. I get Josh standing victorious on everybody's body situation. <laughs> pure, pure, unadulterated chaos. Let's be honest, he's got big Hamza energy. Oh, yeah. But yeah. more controlled and more threatening somehow. Yeah. I, I, like, I, you I, feel I, like there's a lot more purpose behind Josh's yeah. chaos. Um, and I think that's where he is going to. He's doing it for his kid. Make your kid proud. He's going to make his kid proud. Make your kid proud. We but love, also, we love uh, a family man edit. We love a family man edit. Even though, aside also, from that clip, the family man edit went out the window, but still. Love a family man on a reality. I show. I love that that there's also this like underdog Josh, right? Like where you're like he's a villain because they made him into a villain. He yeah. is what they. All it's very Frankenstein's monster situation. <laughs> all good villains have a reason. All good villains are villains with justification. There's a point in Scandal where he, the the guy in Scandal is like uh, this. The father in the show scandal is like, you don't want to see me like that. And that's how I feel about Josh. Like, go back to being nice, Josh. Like, when he flipped that switch, he was like, I am the hell and I am the high water. And hell or high water, you're going down. And I was like, oh, shit, bro. <laughs> like, the anti, the anti-hero. Love and it really did come down to who's scarier, Josh or Katie. And Katie's vengeance maybe the fact that her vengeance is well known helped her yeah uh but folks were scared of katie and oh, yeah, definitely i don't blame them no but it was it was it was great overall top notch 10 out of 10 usually premiere episodes are usually you know i'm not usually a huge fan of premiere episodes but i feel like this one this one oh i love premiere good. episodes well you know i love world building um i'm trying to see if there are any tweets i want to mention because I saw some really great tweets last night that I was just like sending you um, <laughs> at random. And I was like, oh my God, this person, this person, this person. I saw War Dog was real into it. Um, oh, yeah, I saw Alex Cal- Cudwell was saying that when people zig, then you need to zag. And I think that's what Natalie and Rachel need to do now. Let everybody else yeah. be la- loud while they're quiet. Um, yeah, because it's either wait and get picked off or hope that the you know the names go after each other which yeah i thought i thought luna luna killed that brent strategy she said oh you're gonna give me safety go then the exile bro go on down uh i think he'd be the first one to say that um steve moses has a lot of opinions on on who who you should root for um so i think that yeah I, I, War Dog is a big Josh Mosh person. I would expect nothing, nothing less. From the yeah. 
I mean, he said, what what fucking all-star? And it was really interesting because obviously this isn't technically an all-star game, but we feel that way. And it's oh, yeah. it's interesting to know that in the house, they were also feeling like it was. Um, Jay West said, you don't have to at me, by the way, y'all. You don't have to at him. He'll still troll you. And I think that's a, a healthy way to look at it as far as if he was saying, if you, if you don't at me, you're still a fan. I'm like, I guess that's true. It's a good way to look at it. They still talking about you, bro. Um, that's yeah. why you can never just rely after you get done playing a game on the ads. You got to search your name too. You know, so you Google your name and the misspellings of your name, as I've discovered. Uh, <laughs> uh, War Dog, not a fan of Marcelo. Oh. You had some interesting Marcelo versus Josh thoughts. Um, because we I, had two potential villains here, right? Yeah, I thought, you know, my thought process was that it, it was clear, like, Marcelo. I'm not lie if you don't want to do that, by the way. What? No, like, Marcelo came in, I think, with it in mind that he wanted to portray a villain. Like, that was the my initial thought, is, like, he came in, he's like, okay, I'm going to say the things that a villain would say on reality TV. Like, can we not in in one season where there's a returning player can we one time avoid the cliche of their time is done why are they back they've had their shot they need to go right like every time it's just such a reality tv cliche and something that you have to say that they got their shot he was out round two he didn't really get his shot it's not like we're bringing back a former winner or something right like are you that offended that somebody who was a early boot who didn't make the jury is getting to play again. I don't think so. I don't think Marcelo is that offended by it. I felt like he needed to say it to play this role that he very clearly stated in his opening video was the role he was playing of the snake. Nobody trust me. I'm a villain. Um, which I think villains, real villains don't need to do. Yeah. I also, I mean, I already pointed out, I don't think he's a snake because he is so straightforward as far as like everyone knows his game. And for me, a snake is somebody who's, who's in the grass, who you don't see coming, who's going to stab you in the back. It's Jacob Jones. So that's who I think is going to be I the agree. snake of the season. Um, and it's how he, in preseason interview with our interview, that's what he said he wanted to do. He wanted to use his relationships and cut them in the back um, as soon as possible. So, All the but, setup was there. All the setup was there last night. It's interesting that he and Marcelo though are the are the type are the type duo though, right? Because Marcelo wants to be the villain. Jacob is the villain. <laughs> like we have these like really interesting roles that they're playing together, but not in conversation. Yeah. Nobody knows, nobody knows who the real villain is yet. But no. And I right now it looks like Josh. Right now it looks like Josh because Josh has evil chaos in her yeah. Team. But yeah, I think I think that pretty much I think that's everybody and everything. That but it. yeah, I can't, I honestly don't know who's going to win. I still have my winner's prediction of Brendan. If Katie can make it to the end, she has a good case because of this first round thing. Same thing with Josh. If Jay West comes back somehow, obviously it does. Well. Jacob has a very good storyline set up. Yeah. I would say if I had to put money right now, one Brendan, two Jacob, three Billy. Not my question that, like, as winners, not like Boodle, but as winners. Yeah. I my question is even if Jacob gets to the end, if he has to burn that many people, the I whole can, the whole game is in jury. I and we very have, well a second place finish for Jacob Jones. If Muna convinced the whole jury to vote for Jacob and winners at war one, will she then if she's put in jury by Jacob, could she then convince the whole jury to give him place number two? I could see it. Girls go, she's convincing. So we shall we shall see. We got a long way to go. Long, we long, do. long way to go. Already very excited for next Sunday. Um, you will be doing the uh the recap next week. I will, I will with a guest. Um, will they be blurred out? We don't know. We don't know. All guests <laughs> blurred out moving forward. <laughs> it should be it should be Tommy P. So <laughs> Tommy. Maybe he'll bring his prop. Um, maybe, wait. maybe some good recipes for what they should be eating in the sequester home. Absolutely. Well, this was fun. 
We'll do it yeah. again. We'll do it again at some point. I feel like I won't. I won't see you for a while in this. Uh, well, this we'll see each other. I think in January, probably. Yeah, January sometime. We'll do it together. Um, but until then, I guess I think we're. Uh, that is that. So we will see you again next week. And until so I see then, you out there. I have to pee. <laughs> we will. Say it. Uh, see you out there. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.